took strategy-wise? I knew he would start fast. I knew he would start very fast, and it was a it was a hell of a pace early on. It was a hell of a pace, but as the fight went on, like I could I could see it going points. I really did. Like I was getting more and more confident that it was going to reach the final bout. I, I he did slow down a little bit and changed his um, tactics. He was a lot more patient, and if anything, that's normally would work into my my hands. You know, somebody slowing down, but uh, he picked a hell of a shot. Um, like I said, this is boxing. Like I've never, never been in trouble in 22 fights, and it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. He's a, a hell of a fighter. I hope he goes on to win world titles in multiple weight classes, hundred <laughs> percent. Then, then um, obviously, but I'm a little bit, a little bit hurt. My pride's a little bit hurt, you know. But it is what it is. Hey, Michael, uh, uh, Mr. I'll TV with the uh, Spin Bucket Podcast. Uh, first, I want to say uh, shout out to your city and port. And I know it's no consolation uh, prizes in losing the fight, but what you show to the world tonight is that you belong on this level. I know you say your pride yes, is hurt. Yes, yeah. I don't belong on the level I was fighting at before. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. I was. I was. Uh, I was cruising easy, easy points wins to the point where I didn't want to fight them guys. You know, I've had it hard my whole career, and you know, people have told me I deserve a big fight. I deserve to be on the big stage, and I never had the fight to 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 prove that I'm world class. I believe I'm world class. I've never had that win that people can say, "Oh, McKinson's a world class fighter." You know, but although I lost, I hope a lot of people can see that I do belong at the at, at, at world-class level. I don't want to go back to domestic level at all. That's too easy for me. Um, hopefully there's some more big fights out there. Um, you know, 100% I've, I've proven that I don't mind going to somebody's backyard, being booed to the ring. Like, there was a lot of boos to the ring um, today, but there was a lot of cheers coming out of the ring. And so I'm, I'm proud of my performance. I like to watch it back to see how it went, but if I was, it was hostile coming to the ring and people was cheering me coming out, I must have done okay. Mm -hmm. Jeff Zimmerman, finders.com. We talked the other day and, and you said you loved that underdog status, mm. coming to Texas for the first time, and, and you did put on a hell of a show. Um, I also think you surprised a lot of people standing in the pocket right from the get-go. You came right after uh, Virgil. Was that the plan all along? Because you know, people look at your record, two knockouts, they look at Virgil, he's a bona fide knockout artist. Uh, talk about your strategy there. Yeah, my dad told me off a couple of times in, in the corner, the plan was to stay long and stay what I'm good at. Um, but there's a few times we were close and I just want to take every opportunity I possibly can. Um, and it, if I see a shot, I would definitely take it. Uh, you know, uh, to make the most of every little opportunity, but the plan was to try and stay long. Um, try and take it to the late rounds where he's never been before, and then I would get to him mentally. But uh, you know, I only took him one round further than he's been before. But uh, you know, I still took him the furthest out of anyone. Mike, con congratulations on a great performance, and thank you. Not too many people have the courage to come out to Texas and fight a Texas fighter in their own backyard. So all not, respect. Not that. just a Texas fighter; he's like a hero here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was heavily booed coming into the ring, but I loved it. I loved it, I soaked up that atmosphere. Like, that's the type of stuff that I'm built for and I thrive off of it, you know? Um, coming to people's backyards. Like, I've done it, Tom, like, I've done it as of, like, on my rise, I've done it on small shows and stuff like that. But I got to do it on a Golden Boy show, you know, in front of the world, fighting a guy that's tipped for superstardom. You know, I'm very, very proud of where I've, where I've come. Um, not just for, I keep saying, my, my city of Portsmouth and things like that, but for my country. This is big. Not many people are queuing up to, to fight Ortiz, and I jumped at the opportunity. When, when there was talk of the absolute just send me the original contract. You know, 100%. I'm, I'm a very confident guy. I worked very hard. I really did believe I could pull it off tonight, but Virgil is, is something else. He's, um, you know, he, there's not all of that hope for no reason. Uh, like I said, I, I hope he goes on to win multiple world titles because then it makes me look good. <laughs> you know, we, 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 talked, we talked in the ring a little bit and what I told Michael is that us at Golden Boy, we would love to have him back. You know, there's some good fights we can put him in. You know, there's Alexis Rocha, mm. there's, a, there's Blair Cobb, 
which you know you personally want to fight. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll but, fight any of them. But but you know we love fighters like this. You know he comes out and he put on a show. He put on a show and and it proved. You know the fans cheered him on after, because it takes a lot to come over to a, to another country to fight a guy in his backyard, like we said. Um, and we would love to have him back at some point. You know, so we'll we'll be talking to Matchroom and. Uh, if we can match him up with one of our other welterweights, we would love to have him back. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.